Hey, and we got a countdown. I can see it on my screen. Welcome to the inaugural issue of Spiritual Warrior Wisdom. My name is Neil Thrussell, and I'm excited to uh, share my inaugural issue with my friend. And in a little way, I won't, don't tell him this, but he's also a little bit of a mentor. His name is uh, Jamie, and he's with UE Coaching. Welcome, Jamie. Welcome, Neil. Thank you so much for having me here. I can't even begin to tell you how special it is that I'm together with you on this inaugural edition. It's it's absolutely outstanding. I am juiced. Me too. <laughs> so I'm just going to read off. So yes, I'm going to read off because I haven't got it memorized yet, but I'm going to read off a little definition of what, a, to me, a spiritual warrior is. And a spiritual warrior is one who embraces the more noble personal attributes and strengths traditionally associated with warriors in general. Vigor, courage, power, confidence, and accomplishment, integrity, chivalry, honor, and integrity. You notice I said it twice. And combines these tr traits with compassion, commitment, discipline, and a training to master one's ego and overcoming personal desire, moral issues, and all of our weaknesses in the character in order to be of service to our highest self. So somewhere in there, my friend Jamie is in there because I see him that he's got lots of courage. He's done some beautiful accomplishments because truth is, he had a good job, but something drove him to leave this comfortable, well-paying job to go and do something crazy. So what was it? What drove you to this craziness? So you hit it really well there, Neil. Um, one of the key things is, yes, I had that comfort. I was in a place where things were easy. It was very simple to go in every day, make that money, do something. But you know what? It provided me no passion. I didn't have the drive. I didn't have that desire to get up every day and say, yes, this is what I want to do. It was more like, oh. Okay, I guess I got to get out of bed and go to work. And, Bills need paid, you know, whatever. Yeah, you know, getting paid and all that. Hey, that's a real bonus, right? But something inside me said, you know what? There's life in this state. To live life in this passionless state that really didn't have that drive for me. It didn't have that interest. It had none of that juice that kept me going. I knew. I knew right in that moment that I had to make a change. Now, what's interesting is... I didn't really know what I was going to do. So yeah, you know what? It was a little <laughs> bit scary. I, I, I tell you, it was a little bit scary. But when I look back on it, I knew with certainty, and I had that passion inside me that says, I'm going to take what I know, what my passion is in my life, and that's exactly, exactly what I'm going to focus on. Um, I found, and, and this may be an old cliche saying, but where focus goes, energy flows. And for me, that couldn't be more true. I put my focus inside. Um, I was able to connect with an absolutely amazing lady and mentor to me, Anita Kozlowski. Um, I took some training with her. I took some NLP training with her, and it spoke to me. It spoke to my heart, and every single thing that I've done from that point has, has continued with that passion, with that drive, putting me to exactly where I am now. Life is absolutely freaking outstanding. Sweet, and that's what's good to hear. And, um, and so just, I'm going to pump up Jamie a little bit here. So he's an international licensed NLP, and it, that's not something you just, you know, it's not handed out. Anita just does not hand these certificates out and say, you're done. She makes you, I'm not going to use the word work for it, but you need to be an excellent coach and an excellent listener to be able to get that certificate. You're also a certified personal results coach. And one of the cool things is, is that you're a certified breakthrough parenting instructor. So which came first, the parenting, the results, the NLP, what, what, which came first for you? So believe it or not, uh, where it all started out, um, I had a rough patch in my life. I went through, uh, through a divorce and stuff. And at the time, you know, we all get in those states where we can't see anything. We can't see two feet in front of our faces because we're so caught up in it. And I learned that, you know what? I want to be an effective parent. So I went ahead. I found a program online. It was the Breakthrough Parenting Program, and I took that. 
I was so impressed with that program that I went on to get my instructors for it. Um, it wasn't long after that that I got my certified professional coaching certification. And uh, at that point, I knew that I needed more. The coaching was good, but I wanted extra tools in my toolbox. I wanted the tools that are going to make a lasting impact now. I don't want people to wait months, if not years, to sit on the couch and talk about it. I want to find exactly, exactly what they need and share those tools with them now to make that difference. So, yeah, it came with the, uh, with the breakthrough parenting at first followed up by the coaching and then my uh, internationally licensed NLP master practitioner certification. Cool. And if you, if you're just tuning in, you'll, you'll have heard that, that uh, Jamie found an interest, took a program, then applied it and then continued his training to take it to the next level. I believe that we're all driven. We all have a purpose. And that purpose is service. And here's Jamie going, well, it helped me. So how do I help the next person? So he's going to, and he's taking to become an instructor, part of service, which is what one of the things that I think a spiritual warrior does is, yes, he knows, he knows that he needs to be, he or she needs to be strong. But it's a, from a place of compassion that they recognize that they have this strength and now how do they share with people. So thank you for for uh, just allowing me to dig this little piece out. This is great. So you went through your breakthrough parenting, your personal results coach, you've done your NLP. So as a spiritual warrior, what is one thing that you believe that keeps you going in a in keeps you motivated? What's one thing? You know what? That's an awesome question, Neil. I think a lot of us out there, and this this was for myself as well. Once I started understanding what my six human needs were, um, once I started to understand what that was, that's when my life changed. When I started out in this, um, I mean, the six human needs are certainty, uncertainty, significance, love and connection, growth, and contribution. Now, when I started out, my two top needs were certainty and significance. I needed to know for sure what was happening, when was happening, you know, I, I got to make sure that I've got my bills set aside, the money for my bills, I've got to do that. Yes. Certainty was, was right, right up there. Also significance. How yes. important am I? Do people see me? Do they value what I share with them? And I think what you'll find is most people out there, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, certainty and significant are part of those needs. You need to have them. It wasn't until I turned my needs around and recognized that contribution when I shifted my life to one of certainty, from one of certainty and significance to one of contribution and growth and love and connection, my life did a complete 360. It was, it, it was an amazing turnaround and, and recognizing that when I contribute, when I share my gifts, when I share that with other people, it makes a massive impact in the world. And that's, that's what I'm here to do. Um, I recently attended a, an amazing program down in, uh, in Florida. It was uh, Date with Destiny with Tony Robbins. And uh, we really dug in. And one of the things that came up is understanding what our personal question is. My personal question is how can I help even more people live a life that is free from unnecessary suffering now? Everything that I do, everything that I focus on revolves around that question. How can I be of service? How can I help others? And that leads me to I believe that you've continually taken your training, a spiritual warrior, or as we in the, the Shin Dao Institute like to call it, is a Shin Daoist, Shin being heart, Dao the way, so philosophy of the heart, so that there is, to, to Tina and I, that there is no difference between what a, a spiritual warrior, which most people can relate to, and a Shin Daoist, which is not as a common term, but we would love to make it the common term, because we've just taken the same attributes and re as a warrior, but just put it into a more peaceful, loving, compassionate version and called it a, a Shin Daoist. And a Shin Daoist is willing to step into the uncertainty in his training, willing to be seen, willing to be bold and take action. It's like you, if I remember right, pretty much you quit your job and you still decided to go to this training, which was not an inexpensive endeavor. That, that's absolutely correct. And, and I, I knew 
that that training was a must. It was the absolute next thing that I had to do. It was a significant contribution. Let <laughs> Make no mistake about it. It was significant. But I knew if I needed to go where I needed to go to, and if I needed to continue on this journey that I'm still continuing to this day, that is the one step that I absolutely had to take. It was a must. And, and that's, that's something I really want to touch on too, is making things a must in your life. There's a lot of times yes. where we should do things. I, I, you know what? I, I, I could have said, you know what? I should really go to this training or I really should you know, take control of my finances or I should, I should, I should. But when you change it from a should to a must, when you make it the only outcome possible, that's when life changes. Yes. And yeah, it, to some degree, nobody's, when you quit a job, no, you, no one likes to burn their bridges. But sometimes the greatest growth is when we sail on to a, to a new land and burn our boat so that there is no way back. We just go forward. And it, it takes an incredible amount of fortitude, strength, but even more, it takes an incredible amount of courage to face the unknown and a deep conviction into whatever you believe is spirituality, whether it's God, the universe, the life force, Mother Earth. God, it takes an incredible opening and surrender to that higher divine self. Absolutely. It's that belief in self. Um, it's that having that absolute true divine belief in yourself, believing that you can do anything. If you set your mind to it, if you set your a goal, you set your focus, you can accomplish it. I mean, think about in your life, Neil, how many times has there been something where, you know, you didn't have that and it was maybe just a goal or just a thought, a dream that you had and said, someday I'm going to have that. How many of those things, when you think back, when you reflect on your life, how many of those things do you now have? Not too many. Or somebody else, you've been given a divine something, a project, a, a concept, and then you don't act on it. And the next guy beside you, he acted on it and he's That's rich right. and famous or whatever. They have something that, because you didn't act on it. So what's one thing doesn't have to be big, but from someone that's just starting their path, and they're, they, they generally recognize that they have a little bit of spiritual warrior, integrity man, man, uh, means something to them, compassion, courage, honesty, all means it. But if someone is just on the start of their path, what would you recommend, and how would you encourage them to continue on? What would, what would you say, hey, my name's Neil, and I'm, I don't know what I want out of life. I'm just starting. How would you help me out here? Outstanding question. That's a really good one. I love that one because the, the common thing would be to, you know, have some sort of idea, you know, maybe figure out the steps. What's it going to take? How do I get there? We're focusing on the wrong things when we do that. The key is to have a crystal clear outcome. Figure out what your outcome is. Understand exactly, exactly what it is that you want or that you will soon have, or that you will soon achieve. Figure out your outcome first. Now, that might be a little bit counterintuitive. Well, how can I say, you know, what my outcome is going to be? I haven't taken the steps to get there. Forget about the steps. You will figure out the steps if your goal or your outcome is absolutely clear. Start with the outcome first. Okay. So where is, so most people would go into, well, where's the why come in here? Where would you put the why in that in that conversation? So understanding the why. Why are you doing it? What's the importance yeah. of it to you? Yeah. And those are things that a person wants to address. They want to dig in deep. Okay, so if I become a millionaire, what's it going to do? What's my compelling reason for being a millionaire? Yeah, it's great. I've got all this money. I can drive my Ferrari. I can do whatever I want. It's not about having that money. It's not about having those millions of dollars and my purpose in my life when I reflect back on my own personal question how can I help even more people you know what maybe one of my goals is to have a million dollars but when I get that million dollars and notice what I just said there when I yep. get because that that expectation sets up that outcome when I get that million dollars I'm going to be able to help even more people because that is absolutely congruent with my purpose yes so, so for me, 
I find a spirit, a sp I use the term spiritual warrior and Shin Daoist interchangeable. Mm -hmm. So how do you, where, what, what tools do you use to find the Jamie, the piece that, that you want? How do you find your center? How, what, what easy tools do you use to find your focus, the moment of calm, the moment of peace, so that you can gain clarity? Is there any particular thing? Do you meditate? Do you journal? Do you go for long walks? What is it you do to find you? Great question again. I like to use a priming exercise in the morning. So when I first get up, I set myself up for success. I take 15, 20 minutes. I sit there. I go into a form of meditation. Um, I look forward. I'm always seeing what my goal is, what my outcome is. Every single day, I keep that crystal clear focus on what that outcome is and what the purpose is. I go through it in my mind. I see myself every day. I visualize myself seeing that I've attained it. What's my life going to be like in that moment? Who's around me? What am I seeing? Where am I living? Every single day I visualize that, I see it. Brain's an amazing tool. It actually can't tell the difference between what's real and what isn't. By setting Correct. yourself up with that, by setting yourself up with that every single day, visualizing that outcome, making it absolutely crystal clear, you're setting yourself up for success. Thank you. And one of my teachers uh, and mentors, uh, Anurag Gupta, had took me through a, a I did a, a three or four day training with him, and he tells me that my environment is 100% responsible for my success. 100%. And I use the, the example of, I, I do a terrible Irish accent, but Patty, on the night before, on Saturday night, Patty goes out and he drinks and then the pub, and he behaves in a particular way. But the next day on Sunday, because he's a good Irish Catholic, he goes to the church. He's entirely a different person. Because the environment is not the same, the church environment is not the same as his pub environment. So what you, to me, what you're saying is when you start your day um, charging it, you are setting, you are setting the tone for the environment. So I, and you are setting the path of how you want your day to be. Just like if people. If you want to lose weight, the easiest thing to, one of the easiest things to do is make sure when you grocery shop, do not bring in food that's not good for you. Only buy healthy food. And if you have unhealthy food in there, give it away. Don't eat it. Don't, don't delay the start of the, the diet. Um, it's, it's just not helpful. Um, one of the foundations that I believe that most successful people, most spiritual warriors are, well, it's take action. If you don't know what to do, find, find the smallest step that you can move forward. If you don't know what to do, then figure out what it is that you need to do and take that first action and figuring it out. Keep moving forward. And the other thing... I believe is powerful is to forgive yourself regularly. Yes. We all make mistakes and we just need to, I think most people beat themselves up too much. I, I'd have to agree with that. And I'd like to, if, if we can, if we've got the time for it, I'd really love to share a story about forgiveness. And Absolutely. Uh, this, this one, this one's actually near and dear to myself. Um, Five, six years ago, I went through um, a rather tumultuous time in my life. I had uh, quite the divorce. Um, it was one of those ones that anything that could go wrong, I believe, went wrong. And uh, I struggled. I struggled because I was the one that I felt that I always had to be in control. I had to say and do this. I had to take charge and this. And you know what it got me? It got me a whole lot less hair, as you can see. A little, little, <laughs> little bald on the top there. A little shiny yeah. on the top there. Got me a lot of gray hair, and it got me a whole bunch of extra weight. Um, because I was continually fighting something that I didn't need to fight. I struggled through that. And it wasn't until recently that I really recognized, probably within the last year, instead of worrying about it, instead of letting that person have free rent in my head, because isn't that what we're really doing? Aren't we really allowing those people to have that free rent in your head? If you're always thinking about thoughts, scenarios, stuff's always going through your mind. 
I made the choice to fully forgive my ex. Now, a lot of people never get to that point. It's like, well, you know what? They did this or they did that. It doesn't matter what they did. Yes. Give yes. yourself a gift. Give yourself a gift and truly, spiritually, fully forgive them. When I did that, Neil, I got to tell you, when, when I did that, when I let go, when I, when I told her face to face, I said, you know what? I'm sorry for all the things that have happened, and I forgive you. I forgive you from my heart and from my soul. It was like a weight was lifted. If I had a backpack of rocks on my back, it was like I took that backpack off and I set it down because I didn't need it anymore. I was free. Forgiveness yes. is freedom. And, and I just, you know, when you said forgiveness, it, 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 that spoke to me right there. It, it was right there. And now I'm able to live in a state of gratitude. And it's beautiful. It's an absolutely beautiful state. Ah, thank you. Thank you for sharing. And You're just welcome. As, just as before, uh, I don't mean to diminish the comment, but we need to make sure that we actually – so if you need to get a hold of – if you choose, we're on Facebook, and you want to you know, check out Jamie and his work, you can go to UE Coaching. On the, so it's a UE Coaching page on Facebook, so it's facebook.com. UE Coaching, or if you're, you don't want to be on the Facebook and you want to check out his website, go to www, that's the letter U, the letter E, and then coaching.com, and uh, you've got, uh, you do a weekly, monthly, I forget how frequent your newsletter comes out. So right now we have a we have a monthly newsletter that we do send out. We hate spamming people because we hate getting spam. So it's not something where you're going to see, you know, five, six, seven a day. That drives me crazy. The first thing I look for is the unsubscribe button. We do it once a month unless we have something really special. You might get to that's it tops sign up. We've got some really great things. Um, we do our strategic holistic coaching with bring, which brings in an aspect of health. So we work on the health side. The, the physical health side with the body, uh, my wife, Stephanie, is a certified iridologist, so we bring in some iridology, some natural health, and then we bring in the NLP, working on the mind side. We, we marry those two modalities together, and it's an absolutely amazing combination. Sweet. And uh, I, I missed that your Twitter handle is UE Coaching. UE. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think, and, so, yeah, if. What we've said, and you just want to know a little more about uh, uh, Jamie or, and or his wife, Stephanie, you can go to their website and or the Facebook page. If you're a Twitter follower, you can go to UE, the letter UE Coaching. Um, yeah. Um, so just I needed to make sure that we shared with this because but I have in the past have just went Whoop! and and then we're <laughs> sitting there at the end. And I'm going. So we didn't do anyone a service by not saying how to get a hold of my guests in previous conversations. So I'm like, Neil, that's bad. Neil, that's bad. So, yeah, um, Jamie is – and this is me saying Jamie's very approachable. He's open to questions. He'd love to hear from you. Um, yeah, and uh, so any last minute that you would like to thought – We've gone at a crazy pace. We've got about seven minutes left. Any thoughts that are just popping out that you'd like to share? Uh, one of the biggest ones there is definitely that belief in yourself. It's about controlling your life. Um, it's really easy for us to get caught up in allowing others to make those decisions for us. Um, sometimes we have a decision that we have to make that, ah, it's just crazy. I, I can't make it. I just, I, I can't do it. It's too much for me. And so we allow someone else to do it. When we do yes. those sort of things, we give away our personal power. And that's something, be strong in your personal power. Believe in yourself. Make your own choices. Grab the steering wheel of the ship of life and steer it yourself. If there's one thing I could do, don't give away that power yourself. You'll be so incredibly thankful for it. That brings up an interesting, because personal power and then allowing the spirit the the universe to guide you are 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 still like they work side by side yes like as a yes. spiritual warrior you look to the signs that if everything is lining up and having you move in a particular direction 
sometimes our ego wants us to turn into that away from that direction and the results are not as good as we'd want and we need as people spiritual warriors to pay attention to the spiritual signs pay attention to the guiding posts in life to what's really around us and allow the ego to uh, share with us what it thinks but still make whole and open decisions from all the information and not just what's comfortable. That's exactly right. It's learning to trust your intuition. It's that little voice inside. It's that little voice that says, ah, maybe I, maybe I shouldn't be doing that. Or you know what? Maybe I should take this step. For the most part, I think as a species, I don't know that we do that great of a job as a whole, <laughs> but there are, there are some of us. And if we train ourselves, if we train ah, ourselves to listen, exactly. Train ourselves to listen to those voices, believe in that intuition, to listen to those voices and say, you know what, I'm going to do this. Um, your life will flourish. It's when we say, you know, we hear those voices, we hear that intuition talking to us, and we say, no, I'm not going to do that. That's not right. That's when we're constantly, you know, butting our heads up against that wall. Learn to trust your intuition because rarely will it steer you wrong. I I hear you. And Jamie is a, is a is a is a beautiful example. He left a job and things and things just started to line up for him. An opportunity to speak with came up, an opportunity for holistic healing came up. He, him and his wife did a tour in in northern Alberta and that's opened up to a repeat perform a repeat uh, in, in northern alberta possibly monthly possibly bi-monthly and it's just from being following like following your heart but being open and cognizant of the signs that are always present um that's exactly right so we're uh we're getting darn close so once again i would like to say Thank you for uh, for joining us to our to our listeners. And if you would love to connect with with Jamie and his wife Stephanie, you can on Facebook U E Coaching, or on the on the world the World Wide Web. It's <laughs> w the letter U E Coaching dot com, and either in and. Uh, Look around and pay attention. Jamie is, and Stephanie are just, they're on the verge, in my view, on the verge of exploding. You will see Jamie and Stephanie in lots more places. And that's a beautiful thing. Um, so I really, oh, oh, I started my ending role too soon, but that's okay. <laughs> I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for uh, coming on to the our inaugural show. Um, we've got uh, Jason Steele next week, and it's he is an actor turned coach, so he's got a uh, an interesting story. J uh, Jamie knows him as well. And um, I want to thank you for, for coming, uh, Jamie. Awesome, Neil. And I want to really thank you, too, especially for being on your inaugural edition. This has been my privilege, my honor. So thank you from, from, from me to you. Namaste. Yeah, and I look forward to uh, having you back. We'll Because uh, these are conversations. It's casual Absolutely. conversations with uh, – everyday people so i've got a coach this time i've got an actor i've got uh, a reverend coming on so we're just casual conversations and it's spirituality and personal growth from um whoever's sitting on the couch for the day so it's a beautiful experience so thank you and we will talk with you soon outstanding neil thank you so much